Come on, let's lift up the name of Jesus Christ. There is none other in heaven or on earth. Welcome to another episode of Hope in Christ with Denise, here on Kingdom Influencers Broadcast, where we place our hope in the only hope there is, Christ our Lord. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome back to Hope in Christ with Denise here on Kingdom Influencers Broadcast. I'm your host, Minister Denise, and I welcome you back to today's episode. So again, thank you, thank you, thank you for tuning in to Hope in Christ with Denise here on Kingdom Influencers Broadcast. I am your host, Minister Denise. I thank you, I thank you, and I thank you. Um, Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. I thank you again for tuning in. And um, we're going to jump right in to today's episode. So for your those that are watching watching on YouTube, I have added slides for you to be able to see. Um, if you are listening, I thank you again for tuning in. So again, here at Hope in Christ with Denise, we are healthy, we are overcomers, we are purpose, and we maintain an eternal perspective as we seek to walk in our true identity in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Before we jump right in, I'm going to open us up with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you, O God, for your word. We thank you for your truth, God, and the inward parts, Father, for that is what you desire. I pray for this broadcast. I pray for um, this station. I pray for Kingdom Influences. I pray for those all around the world who um, are called upon your name and call out your name as Lord. So, Father, we bless you and we give you glory and we give you honor. Thank you for speaking through me, all of you and none of me. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. All right, so before we jump into today's um, teaching or today's episode, I want to review the the vision of Hope in Christ uh, Ministries and Hope in Christ within these podcasts. So the vision of Hope in Christ Ministries is to help others to learn ways to organize your thoughts and unfold God's word through the Hopeway resources, lessons from the word, hosting Bible journaling, verse mapping workshops, and these podcast podcast episodes, as well as speaking engagements about wholeness and true identity in Christ. So we have been walking through a series on um, with the title "Walking in Relationship," and uh, we know how important it is to walk in relationship with the Lord. It is vital. Um, for our spiritual health. And so we're going to continue in that series. And and we know, again, it's an important part of our relationship with the Lord. And one of those most vital parts of our relationship with the Lord is prayer. And um, God has blessed me and given me um, some components of prayer using each letter in the word prayer. And so we're going to dive into that for the next few episodes. So today we're going to begin with the P in prayer. And the P stands for posturing yourself, yourself, myself, all of us. And we posture ourselves under the mighty hand of God so that he can do the will, his will through us, and he can show us the way um, to go. And so the first letter in prayer is posturing yourself. So if you are taking notes, I pray that you would go ahead and grab something, um, grab a pen, grab some paper, grab a notebook, highlighters, whatever you need to grab, because I know that God has given us something amazing to, to chew on today and for the next few weeks. 
And so the prayer acronym is, um, so our strategy for today, uh, remembering that at um, here at Hope in Christ with Denise, one of the things that I do is teach you ways to unfold God's word. And so one of those strategies that we're going to use today is called an acronym. And acronyms are used, I'm an English teacher, and acronyms are used to help you organize your thoughts. And so um, God gave me some words or phrases for each letter to help us organize our thoughts so that we can use them however we choose in prayer or when we're studying prayers of people's um people um, prayed in the scriptures and so this is um dear to my heart because as i was studying solomon's prayer i came up with this acronym and it wasn't me to god be the absolute glory it's all god he's the one that gave me this acronym and so the acronym is posture your heart the p the r is reverence have reverence for god repent and release things and we'll talk about that in the next episode acknowledgement acknowledging who god is we'll get into that uh, as well and yielding our position so um as christ said not my will but thy will be done and then the e is entreating god for other people not just for ourselves and then the final r in prayer is reflect on what god has already done in our lives and so yes i put that at the end because sometimes we walk away from um, when we pray or when we are writing in prayer journals or whatever God has given us to do, we may walk away feeling like he's got really going to do it. And so in that final part of the prayer acronym, I want us to start and stop and reflect, just sit still or, or write a prayer, whatever we have to do to remember what God has already done. And so we'll get more and more to the other parts of the prayer acronym, but today we're going to focus in and zoom in on posture in our hearts. All right, so what does the word posture mean? So as an English teacher, uh, many of you who've heard me teach online, heard me teach on the radio podcast on Kingdom Influencers um, and Divine Restoration uh, Ministries, you understand and you know that I love word definitions. I love word study, right? And so the first thing we wanna talk about is what does the word posture really mean? Because in some minds, we may think that posture is the way we're standing or the way we kneel down to pray or how cute we look with our, our um, prayer shawls on and all those different things. We may think that's what posturing um, means. But remember the phrase, what we we're talking about today is posturing our heart. And so the definition of that, if you're taking notes or if you're not, if you want to listen to the replay, is the attitude a settled way of thinking or feeling about someone or something. So our attitude towards God and the things of God and, and our relationship with God. So that's what we're going to be looking at today. And the behavior that comes with that attitude. So the behavior, the conduct, and the stance that we take when we come to God in prayer. Now, posturing our heart is... Um, is not just for prayer because we have to posture our heart when we come to Christ in general, but we want to stay focused in on posturing our hearts in prayer. Amen. And we're going to use some practical things that we see in, um, they may not, these individuals may not be praying, but we know that they have either been in prayer or they're seeking God um, in some form or fashion because of the way they their attitude and their behavior and their conduct um, is towards God. Amen. And so again, posture means that attitude, a settled way of thinking or feeling about someone or something. And in our context, we want to say the attitude, our settled way of thinking or feeling about God and who he is and his power and his authority and everything that he can do in our lives. Amen. All right, so the next part of this is we're going to look at um, 
as we looked at the definition, it says, as, as you see, our posture is related to our way of thinking. So our posture is related to the way that, the way that we think or the way we feel about something. So what is your way of thinking as it relates to prayer, as it relates to God, right? Is it just a religious practice? Is it something to check off our list, right? Because sometimes we get like that. We may um, just, I've done, I need to pray. So let me check that off. I did that. Now I'm done. Um, I need to go get grocery. I need to do this. I need to do that. Is it that? Um, or is it only done in church? So what is it? What's our attitude as it relates to prayer and prayer specifically as it goes with walking in our relationship with the Lord. Um, is it, um, is there a special words that we have to say when we pray? You know, a lot of time we live in a, a, a culture where people tell us, oh no, you got to pray like this and you have to do like this. And, 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 the, and we, Jesus said, come unto me, right? He said, come on. He didn't say, come unto me. Um, if you have this and you have that and you have all these special things, he said, come unto me all who are heaven laden and I will give you rest. But like he's drawing us and we come to him. One of the ways we draw to him is in prayer. And so we have to get out of this mindset, right? And stop letting, um, so many different voices go into our minds so that we think that we can't go to God in prayer. Amen. And then the last part, the last question and our opener I want to ask is, do we believe when we pray? Right. That's a big one. Do you believe when you pray? Because that's 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 important, because if we don't believe. And why are we praying? Right. Um, my mother in law used to say, if you're going if you're going to worry, don't pray. And then she said, if you're going if you're going to pray, then stop worrying. Why? Because you have to believe what you're praying. Amen. And so we want to talk about those things today. Amen. All right. So another part of our opener is what comes to mind when you think of our heart posture. And so what I wrote, I made a little little um, splash, word splash, as we call it in school. Um, I wrote down some words and I started thinking about what comes to mind when I think about the heart posture. And one of the words that comes to my mind immediately is hum being humble or humility. That word has to be um, when we come to God. We have to come to God humbly. We can't come to God with pride. We cannot come to God telling God what we think his word should be, what we think he um, He should be doing and how he should be doing it and why he shouldn't do this and why he shouldn't do that because he alone is God. And as he said to Job in the book of Job, he said, where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth. So we have to come to God in a humble fashion when we pray. One of the other words that come to my mind when I think about the heart posture of prayer is we have to be open with God, right? We can't come to God already deciding that if he don't do what, I, what I'm getting ready to ask him to do, then I'm done right? We, we can't come to God like that. We have to be open to hear God's will, right? And also we have to submit to God's will. And for those that are watching on um, the video format, um, the last word here is honest. Um, and so it kind of broke up in the, in, in the typing, but honest, we have to be honest with God. Amen. We have to be absolutely honest with God. Why? Why do we have to be honest? Because he already know. I don't know why we walk around this world. We, we, we go to and fro in this world <laughs> of God's and pretend as if he don't already know. It, it's a relationship because we're coming to him for him to lead and guide us in the already the thing he already knows. Right. And so we have to be honest with God. One of the other things we have to absolutely be vulnerable. We can't heal. We can't be delivered. We can't be set free unless we are vulnerable with God. We have to come to God. I remember the times that I have come to God in prayer and tears and sorrow and sobbing and all these different things, vulnerable because he has the answers. But again, it goes back to do we believe he has the answers for us? And so we want to be vulnerable in the presence of the Lord. Amen. And then 
honoring God. There is, the Bible says in the book of Deuteronomy, there is only one God right? There is only one God. There is not multiple ways to get to God. There are not all these, these gods. And even though man has created religions, there is only one God. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless his name. And so we come to God honoring him as the God of heaven and earth. The Bible says in Genesis 1, in the beginning, God, not God's, it said, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the, um, the face of the deep. And the word goes on in Genesis 1 and 27 to say that God made man in his own image. It is not plural. The book of Genesis does not use plurality. Plural, pur, plurality, sorry. Um, it does not. It tells us that God is God. And the word says that um, when we pray, we pray the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit, and these three are one, right? And so we want to make sure that we honor God, right? We honor him for who he is, amen? And so those are some things that came to my heart when I thought about heart posture. And even as you see and just uh, a moment ago where I stumbled and I fumbled, um, it, it's a heart posture. Am I doing this for me or am I doing this for the Lord? And so when we're doing something for God, we're going to mess up. Why? Because we're human, but he alone is God, right? He's greater than we are. And so I thank God for not um, saying, or, or my flesh not saying, okay, I'm going to start all the way over, but God is like, keep moving. Why? Because he is perfect. We're not perfect. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. All right. So uh, we're going to look at some scriptures, right? And we're going to look at some scriptures in um, the book of Psalms, right? Because that's where we see a lot of prayers and um, reverencing and singing unto the Lord. And so we see here in Psalm 51, 1 through 2, where it says, um, and this is the Psalm of David, one of the Psalms of David, where he says, have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. He said, again, have mercy on me. So this is David coming with a heart posture of knowing that God is God and, and he is the God of creation. He's the God of the universe. He's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Moses, and, and even he's the God of us, right? And so David comes to him saying, have mercy on me because he's acknowledging and honoring him in his power and his authority as God as the one true living God. And so he says, have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. And the love that God shows us, it never ends. It remains. That's what steadfast means, remaining, staying there. And so he's coming knowing that the love that he needs, the love that he seeks is only found in God. Can we park right there for a minute? Because we're searching for love, even in our family. We are searching for love and people and relationships and all these different things. But the steadfast love is only found in God. And so we see here the heart posture of David. We see that he's saying, God, you're the one who loves me. And can we say, a, can, I, can I just add to that just a, just a minute, a side note, only God can show others how to love, how to love, right? People can't give you what they don't have. I had to learn that, right? They can't give you steadfast love if they don't know how to give it, right? God is the one who has steadfast love for us, right? And then it says, according to your abundant mercy, your abundant mercy. So he is acknowledging, he's showing um, as, as he's praying, as he's talking to God, that he's know, he knows that God, even as a human being, he knows he's a human, but God will have mercy because he understands, because he created us, right? And he said, blot out my transgressions. So we see him being humble here. 
right? We see him being humble before the mighty hand of God saying, hey, I have transgressed against you, Lord. And it was me. And can we, again, another side note, can we make sure we make it known and understand that we sin against God and God alone, right? It affects people. It affects the relationships we have, but we sin against God because he's the creator and he's the one who set the standard for our lives. Amen. And then he says, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity. So again, he's coming humbly, right? He's open. He's being honest. Lord, I have sinned. And he says, and cleanse me from my sin. So he's acknowledging that God is the only one who can do this. We can't fix ourselves. If you can, I, can I just set you free for a minute? I mean, set all us free. If we're waiting to heal ourselves, deliver ourselves and cleanse our own sins, we are going to be waiting forever and ever and ever because it's not going to happen. Only God can do that. And I will stand 10 toes down, flat footed, and 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 I, and admit it why because i know i walk through it i walk through healing i walk through cleansing from sin i know that i denise minister of the gospel lover of jesus christ cannot cleanse myself cannot i cannot absolutely positively cannot amen and so what do we, again, what else do we notice about David in this first part of the scripture that we just shared? And that scripture, I'm sorry, I'm going to go back for a second. That is Psalm 51 verses 1 through 2. So in Psalm 51 verses 1 through 2, we see reverence. We notice that he's reverencing God. So all through prayer, when we are praying, we should be reverencing God. He said, have mercy on me. He said, I, I, he, didn't, he didn't say that to his father, brother, sister, mother, he, he, but God, because of knowing his, his, his status, who God is. So he says, have mercy. So that's reverence. And then he said, blot out my transgressions. He didn't blame other people for sinning against God. He said, I did it. So he comes with sorrow. He comes before God with sorrow, right? It says, blot out my transgressions. And then also in the last, um, one of the other um, parts of the scripture that stood out, he said, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Sorrow and humility. Again, I did it. It was me. And he's he wants God to take it away. And so he goes before God. In, in, in um, a humble, humbleness of heart and godly sorrow, amen? And then we have Psalm 55 verses three through four. And in that we see, for I know my transgressions. So he continues, so David continues. I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. He said, I know I don't sin. And there it, it's 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 present, it's here. He said, against you, you only have I sinned and done what is evil in whose sight, not my sight, in your sight. He said, against you, you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. Why? Because God sets the standard of living. And so David is repenting here and we're going to get to repenting in the next episode. But this is we see him repenting. Right. He said, I, you I've sinned against. I might have brought harm to some other people, but it's you that I have sinned against. He says, so that you may be justified in your words and blameless in your judgment. He's not, you don't, we don't see a heart of arrogance here. We see a heart of humility. We see that he's saying to God, you are writing your judgment towards me. 
Many of us, when we walk in this in this new age, um, as we as I would call it, this new age, we hear people say, "But I'm a good person." Says who? Says who? Because the standard doesn't begin with me and the standard doesn't end with me. The standard begins and ends with God. And so the word says that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And so when we say something is not sin, right, we can't, that's that's not humility. That is prideful in a sense because we're saying to God what he said is not right. But we see here David's posture of his heart. He's saying to God, for you and you only have I sinned against. And I've done what is evil in your sight. In your sight. Amen. Hallelujah. Bless your name, Jesus. And then the last part for um, Psalm 55, we're going to look at verse five. And it says, behold, I brought, I was brought forth in iniquity. And in sin did my mother conceive me, right? He is open, this heart open to God. Listen, Lord, I know born and I was born in sin and shaped in iniquity. I am but human being. I am dust. Forgive me like only you can. Amen. And so we see a few other things that we notice in these scriptures, we see um, humility again, we see vulnerability and we see honesty with God. And so the, the um, humility, vulnerability, honesty, uh, we notice this in David's posture, his heart posture towards God. So in the humility, we see him saying against you, you only have I sinned and done what is evil. So the opposite of that would be pride. So the opposite of humility is pride. To say, oh, I'm, this is not a sin. This is this is an ancient text. This is an ancient book, and it wasn't for us. It was for the people back then. That's the that's the opposite of humility. And so we have to check ourselves when we come before God. When we come to God, not just in prayer, but in the presence of the God of God, we want God to move in our lives. We want to be healed, delivered, and set free. We have to come with a heart of humility. Amen. And then the vulnerability, we see where he says, I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. He's vulnerable before God. He's like, God, I, I, I can't even lie. It is what it is. I did it. And so that's the vulnerability. We, we can be vulnerable. It's, it's interesting to me how sometimes we can be so vulnerable before other people and in, in the presence of other people that we deem to trust. But the one true God we feel that we can't be vulnerable. Well, he already knows it. That's like me trying to hide in plain sight. Like I'm sitting here, but I'm like, you can't, can you see me? You can, you can see me, you can hear me. It's, 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 it doesn't make sense. I can't hide because God is God, right? And he's everywhere and he knows all things. And so I have to just let go and be vulnerable. Be vulnerable to him because he alone has the answers. He alone, he's a gentleman. He's not going to force it. He's not going to force us to, to come to his love, to his steadfast love. Remember what David said, his steadfast love. He's not going to force it, but he wants to do it. Amen. And then he was honest. He said, I, I was brought forth in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. He knew that was the truth. You know, and in our world today, people are like, what do you, you know, that's that's an insult. No, it's not. It's truth. Right. And so we have to be honest. We all were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. We were. And so we have to be honest in that in the, and posturing our heart before the Lord. Amen. All right. Just another scripture that we're going to look at. And this one is not necessarily prayer or or speaking to God, right? Or reverencing God and, and singing and song. But this is um, the widow's offering. And I thought about this because I said, God, I want a, uh, another scripture about the posture of the heart. And immediately the widow that was given her last came to me, right? And, and, and this is the scripture and it's Mark 12, 41 and 42. And it says, and he, and he, Jesus, sat down opposite the treasury and watched the people putting money into the offering box.
And it says, many rich people put in large sums and a poor widow came and put in two small copper coins, which make one, make a penny. So she put in these two little coins that only made one cent. And Jesus called his disciples to him and said to them, truly, I say to you. This poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the offering box. For they all contribute out of their abundance, but she out of her poverty has put in everything she had, all she had to live on. So someone who has an apostate heart, a heart towards God, a humble heart, a, a vulnerable heart, this, this lady was vulnerable before these people with they were just given out of their abundance as Jesus said and so they was just I would call it in our time just doing like you know a religious practice which we give so we're supposed to give so here um, but this woman clearly that was some there was something on her heart that she was trusting God for and she was willing to give it all up to know that God would do whatever it is she, she needed him to do. Amen. And so I found this to be something um, that was very um, key of looking at a heart posture because it wasn't about what they were given. Clearly, we see that in Jesus' words, but it was about the heart behind the given. Amen. And so we want to, again, I know we're talking about prayer, but we want to make sure that whatever we do, that our heart is postured in such a way that it is not um, prideful. It is not look at what I have and what I'm able to give, but it's God, I trust you. I trust you with millions because you are my God. I trust you with, with, with $2 and knowing that you can provide more. I trust you because you're the creator of heaven and earth. And I know that whatever I, my need is, if my need, my need may not be money, but my need may be peace. And I, so I know that you are the God of peace. And so we have to come before God with a heart postured um, because the word says that man looks at the, at, at the outer appearance of, of individuals, but God looks at the heart. And so whenever we do something, we need to be mindful that God sees the heart. We see Jesus responding to this woman's heart, her posture of her heart. Amen. Just a little bit more. And so what do we see here? Absolutely, positively, we see faith. We absolutely see faith here. Um, faith, it says, has put in more than all those who are contributing to the offering box. Her two um, copper coins and made up one cent was more than all the money that was placed in the offering box. So we see faith in this woman, right? And then we see vulnerability. As I said earlier, a poor widow came and put in two small copper coins, which make a penny. So her vulnerability to be in the not having anything, of course, I'm sure she was, she was looked at funny and all these other things, but she didn't care. She didn't care. So there's something to be said about being vulnerable. Freedom comes, I believe, with being vulnerable as well. Amen. And then honor. Um, she, out of her poverty, has put in everything she had, all she had to live on. So she, she, it was, a, it was um, honoring God above herself. This is my, this is my opinion about this, and what I, what I see, what I pick up from this scripture is that she was honoring God more than herself. Her faith in God knew that that wasn't it. She might have put what was last, but God was going to provide more. Amen. So we want to think about that when we're thinking about heart posture. And then, and so we've um, seen a couple of scriptures, David, right? We've seen David, we've seen how, um, David's heart was vulnerable and honoring and 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 um, humble before the Lord, and so I just wanted to give a few pieces 
of scripture that help us to see what a heart posture, what our heart posture should be, right? Um, we know that there are some scriptures where it shows that uh, the person's heart wasn't humble, right? Um, their heart wasn't uh, honoring to God. It's part they, they had pride and arrogance and different things. And But I wanted to focus in on the, the humble heart, the heart that was vulnerable, the heart that was um, honoring to God and all these different um, positive traits, because that's what we have to have when we come before the mighty King. Amen. And so um, I thank you all for tuning in. In our next episode, we're going to talk about repenting and releasing. Um, we're going to be talking about, we know what repent means. So I'm just going to briefly talk about what the next episode is going to be. Uh, we know, um, again, what repent is, but releasing, what are we going to be talking about releasing? Releasing other people, releasing our will and our own desires, um, and releasing our past pain and failures, right? And so when we come to God, we posture um, before um, in a humble heart, seeking the Lord, knowing who God is, coming in faith, right? Um, even if we have just a mustard seed of faith, God can grow that faith, right? And so we don't have to have be this person who know how to speak these, these um, eloquent words to God in prayer, because remember, we just finished talking about God looks at the heart. So that person could have all these eloquent words to say, and their heart be so far from God. And so I want you to keep in mind that when you come to God in prayer and drawing in relationship with the Lord, he is seeking a heart, right? He is seeking a heart to be postured in such a way where it's not pride and arrogance. Because when we have pride, we're walking in pride and we want our way and we want, we want to know why God didn't um, punish the person who hurt us and all these other things. We can't hear God clearly. Amen. And we have to remember one thing. One thing God had to remind me is that all, all have sinned and that Christ died for each and every one of us, including the person or the persons who hurt us. Amen. And so I pray that you will stay tuned in to the next episode where we talk about repenting and releasing others and releasing things and releasing even ourselves from the throne of our own heart. Amen. So that we can grow in our relationship with the Lord. All right, before we leave, I want to share because again, remember at Hope in Christ with Denise and Hope in Christ Ministries, we show others how to dive into God's word, how to unfold God's word so that we can get to the one goal, walking in true identity with God, walking in purpose and knowing who we are in him, amen? And so um, knowing and, and reverencing God and honoring God as our God and again and, and allowing Christ to be Lord of our lives. Amen. And we dethrone ourselves and allow him to be the Lord. And we're not Lord anymore. And so one of the things I want to share with you is some basic uh, Bible tools, study tools that I use often. Um, and so again, you're going to hear me talk more and more on the podcast now um, this year about um, verse mapping, Bible study strategies, things to help us to get back to God's word. Because the thing that God wants us to do is get to his word, get to him in his word, in prayer, and in true relationship. Amen. And so a couple of things that I want to share with you is um, I'm a Bible journaler. I am a verse mapper. I create verse mapping resources for others as part of my ministry. Um, and so I am a some of the things that you could use are sticky notes and uh, pens and colored pencils, highlighters. You don't have to do all of those at once. But some of the things that these are some of the things that I use to dig into the word with the sticky notes I take and I um, I make note of things that stand out to me, maybe key words, whatever it is that stands out. That's what I do with my sticky notes. Highlighters, um, I highlight and sometimes I highlight with different color codes where I, if people are having conversations, right? Um, I highlight those different in different colors. Um, washi tape, um, because I, again, I have a journaling Bible and I and I do journaling, right? I do verse mapping. Washi tape is important because I'm 
I'm using it to stick notes in and um, and just kind of decorate my Bible. That's something that I like to do. There's nothing wrong with washing washi tape and stickers. And um, soon I'll be creating my own um, um, stickers for my resource um, ministry in the Hope Way. And I'll be adding some things there. But stickers are so much fun. So if you um, are like me, grab me some stickers and, and dab into the Word. One of the other things that I use often, almost every single time that I study the Word, is the Strong's Concordance. Um, the Strong's Concordance is important because we want to look at the original Hebrew understanding of a word and the original Greek understanding of a word. So this that's very important. And then I have a strategy binder because, again, I create strategies for studying the word. And so I have my own binder because I use my own resources and I just love to just just dive in. Um, I just mentioned the journal, journaling Bible I have is the ESV journaling Bible. It is phenomenal. So if you get a chance to grab one, do so. And then the Olive Tree Bible app and U version Bible apps, I, I use them all the time. So Carter Bible app I use sometimes, but Olive Tree and U version I use all the time. I love the audio version on you on the U version app. And Olive Tree has so many resources of um, commentary, um, atlases, all kind of things that you can use to to really, really understand the historical side of the word. Amen. So I wanted to share that with you. So as a takeaway um, from this episode. And then again, thank you for joining me um, for this episode uh, here on Kingdom Influencers broadcast. And if you have been blessed um, by Hope in Christ with Denise and the resources and strategies, please, please, please check out my website at www.denisemwalker.com and you can grab uh, some of the resources. One of the resources that I am super excited about is the Hope Method that I've gotten so much feedback. Um, so if you need a quick um, tool, it's 15 minute strategy of diving into the word that makes you really think and slow down and think about the word, um, go to my website and check out the Hope Method and um, let me know what you think. And then finally, feel free to follow Hope in Christ with Denise and me, author Denise and Walker, on social media and subscribe to my YouTube channel um, at The Hope Way. And also follow me on TikTok at The Hope Way with author Denise. And also follow me on Instagram, at um, author Denise and Walker, The Hope Way, and the podcast Instagram, Hope in Christ with Denise. And finally, on Facebook, follow me at, at The Hope Way, the page, which is fairly new, and at Hope in Christ with Denise and author Denise and Walker. Um, again, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in to this great episode. I was blessed. I hope you were blessed. I'm going to close us out in prayer, and I want you to have a phenomenal rest of your day and week and place your hope. And the only hope there is Christ, our Lord. Father, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you, Lord God, for your word about posturing our hearts. Father, we bless you and help us to understand. Thank you for the opportunity to show that we are human, God, and that we are not perfect and we strive for perfection in Christ Jesus. And so I thank you and I praise you for this day. I thank you for this opportunity for sharing your word. God, I pray um, that you would bless those that are listening, that you would help them open their eyes, their ears, and everything that they need um, provide, that they will come to you, oh God. I pray that you, as your word says, as, as you be lifted up, you said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. And so we lift you up today, oh God. We give you glory and honor. We thank you for this day that you have made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Father, we bless you, and we give you honor and praise in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. So again, thank you, thank you, thank you for tuning in to Hope in Christ with Denise. I pray that you were blessed. I pray that this was um, a blessing to you and have a phenomenal rest of your week and remember to place your hope in the only hope there is christ jesus our lord hallelujah thank you jesus we bless your name we bless your name